And for the Irish caddis, we're going to be using a, and this is eight off, but it's a caramel brown thread. For the trailing shuck, we're going to be using a Zelon amber. I picked this up just the other day because I was all out of regular Zelon, so I have to, and I've been trying this Polytron by the fly shop, so I was just coming back from Manzanita, I picked this up. It's two and a quarter, and it's a huge spool, so you'll tie thousands of these flies. Okay? So that's going to be the trailing shuck of the, uh, of the fly. Um, for the body, just hairs ear dubbing. Real simple, but was going to be very spiky. And for the wing, which is a strange shaped wing, it's just white or light done Zelon. I happen to have white. I have more white than I have light done, so I brought in white tonight for you guys. Okay, it really doesn't matter. Now, for those who don't have, and I found to tie this fly well, because it's a really shaggy fly. I mean, this body is real shaggy. And the best way to get a really shaggy body with hair's ear, and I'm not a big fan of dubbing wax. Um, I would suggest if you don't have any, I can loan you some dubbing wax. But let me go show you the finished fly that we're going to be tying here. There it is. What makes this fly so unusual is the shape of the wing. Can you see the shape of the wing? It's just a loop. Cases is very lacking. Okay, so we're going to do this with a size 14. I'm going to give you guys some, give you guys a break, so and re reduce your eye strain. Those are my 14s. I'm running low, but this should be enough for the class. I got a lot of 14s. No, oh, you can, I'll, I'll, I'll get some more. That's all right. Unless I run out of them, then, then yeah, you can use yours. <laughs> I should have enough. Okay, pinch down the barb. All right. Again, um, eight out thread. Um, actually, with fourteen, you probably could get away with six off, but. I found with today's new threads, your eight aughts as strong as your six. The only reason you need a thicker thread is if you're trying to create bulk. If you don't need bulk, then the new, th new, new threads are great. So we're going to start our thread again about a third of the way back. If you notice, all three flies started about a third of the way back on the hook. And that's because there are some things that are going in front. So we're going to start our thread. Okay. Now the nice thing about this, because this is a dub body and I'm not doing a rib, I can just spiral my thread to the back. I do not have to lay an entire base of thread. And the reason I don't use a base of thread all the time is because the days of using a base thread was when they used to pre-wax their silk and that wax silk kept things from sliding. If you take your new polyester threads, which are smooth, and put it on a smooth hook, when you lay a material over it, guess what? It's just as slippery as the bare hook was. You haven't gained anything. But by creating a spiral, if you spiral it and run your finger over it, you'll feel how rough it is. Well, a rough surface gives you points of friction. Points of friction means you will hold something down. Simple as that. So we're going to grab Zelon again. This is a 14 out of this spool. Uh, let me just pull out a long hank and you just get these guys cutting as much of this stuff they want off. It's not like I'm going to run off. But let, me go get, let me go get a piece. I'm going to cut off a whole hank so I can show them how much we're dealing with. Pitch. Okay, here's, here's the entire hank, right? So we don't need an entire hank. Even on a 14, half of the hank would be more than enough for this particular fly. Okay, so here, I'll give you the other half. So all you need is half the hank. Okay. I've got my thread back to where the barb is, which is the bend of the hook, and to tie it in, I'm going to take three turns of thread, again, spiral back to where he started to tie in, two turns to tie it down, retract it because I don't need it that long, and I'm going to spiral my thread again towards the back. Now on this fly, it's a little different than most dry flies, I want you to notice where I'm going with my thread. Can you see how I have actually gone down the bend of the hook a little bit? OK, 
Okay, because we really want this shot actually further down into the water and not laying flat. We want it down deep. So we actually wind our thread and we actually go down the bend of the hook with just a little bit. Then I'm going to bring my thread up a little. I'm going to cut my shuck again. Measure, measure, and I did it with my eyes, but you're looking about the same, same length as the hook is going to be your trailing shuck. You can make it a little shorter if you like, but there's, again, since you're dealing with the shuck of a midge, it's the same length as the body. Okay, at this point, I'm going to wax my thread, and this is a, a high-tack wax. For those who want to borrow it, I'll let you try it. I don't use a lot of wax, but I really like this stuff because it's really tacky. This is a loom. It's my loom. They've got low and high-tack, and I like the high-tack. And so now what I'm going to do, if you, I don't know if you can see this, but I'm going to almost, it's almost called touch dubbing. I'm going to take, I'm going to take my dubbing and pretty much keep it on here, real ragged and loose. In most cases, we're looking at very thin dubbing. This one you want thick because caddis are a little fatter. to dub our body. I'm not really not spinning my dubbing on, I'm actually just kind of compressing it onto the thread. Take a couple of turns in front. At this point I've got it shaggy enough, but if you'd want to shag your, this is the time you take your dubbing brush. Just as you can see, and I didn't do it, but look how, look how shaggy, look how shaggy this thing is. And this is what you're looking for out of this, this slide. Can you see how, can you see how shaggy it is? That's really what you're looking for. Most of the time, you like nice, te nice tight, neat bodies. This one you want really thick and shaggy. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our white Zelon. And in this case, because it is a 14, you want to take one whole hank of the Zelon, in this case, because it is a 14. If I was going to go smaller, um, I would take less, but in a 14, I want an entire hank. Okay, now there's two ways to do this little loop. Okay, I'm going to show you both of them, and you pick the one that seems to be easiest. Um, one of the ways is you take it and you lay a, a little rough base, which is oval turns, on the far side, tie it in with a couple of turns of thread, make a loop, and tie in the other side. Okay, now this loop is supposed to, now I got it standing up, but the loop is actually supposed to lay flat like that. Can you see that? Okay, or the other way to do that. And the way I prefer to do it, because I don't, it doesn't seem to lay as flat, is I take my Zelon and I make a loop out of it to start with. Can you see? See the loop? And that loop is going to lay like this. And that loop is going to be as long as the body and no longer. So I simply pinch that. And there's my my loop. For a flat body, that works good. Yep. Okay. I mean a flat loop. Yeah, I hear you, Steve. You left me a message. We'll get to you later. Okay. So now I've got my loop tied in. Now I come back to and I need my wax back. I pen. Just grab whatever that is. Grab wax. Okay. You know. Just touch it to my thread. Now you don't need to wax as much thread because you're only going to be dubbing the short portion of, of the head. Okay, same technique exactly. You're going to just take it and you're just going to kind of pinch it onto, onto the thread. You can see what I'm doing here. I'm not really rolling it on, am I? 
because I'm looking for the wax to retain it. So then what you're going to do, you can kind of roll a little bit if you'd like, but it's not that important. Okay, you're going to wrap, starting back at the wing. I don't need all that. And then up to the head, you're done. Finish the eye, up at the eye. And I need to borrow your dubbing brush again for a second if I could, because what we're going to do is shaggy it up again. Like this is, I don't know what happened to my toothbrush. I thought I tossed it in here, but I left in your shave kit. No, probably laying on the on my desk. There it is. Now, the whole point of this is it's supposed to be really rough and supposedly. Now, I haven't seen the, seen the nymphs or the emergers, and that's what this is. This is an emerger pattern. And I've not, I personally have not seen it, but I've talked to, um, talked to the guys at Blue Ribbon, and the key is shaggy. I mean, that looks terrible. It's not a pretty fly, but this is what fishes. This fishes and catches fish. You can make a nice, tight, pretty fly, and it won't work. It won't catch fish. Wayne kills them.